You know, we see it, we drink it, we swim in it every single day. But water, water is so much more than what we see on the surface. It has this incredible set of chemical properties that are so unique, so powerful, that they literally make our entire world possible. So let's pull back the curtain and really explore the secrets that make water the most extraordinary molecule on Earth. So what is it? What makes this simple little molecule, just hydrogen and oxygen, the absolute superstar of them all? Why is it the foundation for literally all life as we know it? Well, that's the big question we're going to dive into right now. And believe it or not, the key to unlocking almost all of water's magic, it all comes down to one single powerful idea, polarity. It's basically a tiny molecular game of tug of war. So what is polarity? Well, think about a simple magnet, right? It's got a north pole and a south pole. Molecules can have the exact same thing, but with tiny electrical charges. This happens when the electrons zipping around inside the molecule aren't shared perfectly even. One end becomes a little bit negative and the other becomes a little bit positive. And here you can see exactly why water is a polar molecule. Look at that bent V shape. That big oxygen atom in the middle is kind of an electron hog. It pulls the electrons in closer, which gives its side a slight negative charge. And that leaves the two little hydrogen atoms with a slight positive charge. That simple little imbalance, that's the secret to everything that follows. Now, this polarity doesn't just affect one single water molecule all by itself. Oh no, it completely changes how groups of water molecules interact with each other. It creates this invisible glue that holds all of water together, and that's what gives it all its incredible properties. Okay, so there are two main forces we need to talk about here. First, you've got these things called van der Waals forces. They're kind of weaker, temporary attractions. Think of it like molecular Velcro. But the real star of the show for water is the hydrogen bond. This is a much stronger attraction that forms specifically between polar molecules like water, and it just changes everything. And if you want to see van der Waals forces in action, you don't have to look any further than a gecko. I mean, how do they do that? How do they climb straight up a glass wall? The only reason they can defy gravity like that is because millions of these tiny individual attractions are all working together. It's a perfect example of how even a weak molecular force can have a really powerful, visible effect. And this is where it all comes together. That slightly positive hydrogen end of one water molecule is just irresistibly drawn to the negative oxygen end of its neighbor. That connection right there is a hydrogen bond. And it's these bonds that link trillions of individual H2O molecules into the dynamic, interconnected liquid that we know as water. All right, so now that we've got polarity and hydrogen bonds down, we can finally understand the incredible real-world properties that emerge from these tiny interactions. This is where water's magic really starts to show. You see, these hydrogen bonds give water a handful of amazing, almost magical abilities. First up, you've got cohesion. That's just water molecules sticking to each other. Then there's adhesion. That's water sticking to other things, like the inside of a plant stem. Put those two together and you get incredibly high surface tension. And maybe the weirdest of them all, they make solid ice less dense than liquid water, which is why ice floats. And right here, you can see these properties in action. On the one side, adhesion lets water literally climb the walls of a plant's vascular tissue. That's how it drinks. And on the other, cohesion creates this powerful skin on the surface, a tension so strong it can actually support the weight of an insect. We're talking two totally different properties, all coming from one single cause, those hydrogen bonds. And here's that really strange thing about ice. When water freezes, those hydrogen bonds don't just hold the molecules together, they lock them into this rigid, open crystal structure. Now, this structure actually takes up more space than the jumbled up molecules in liquid water, and that's what makes ice less dense. It's why ice floats, which insulates lakes and oceans and allows life to survive the winter underneath. Seriously, without this one quirky property, life in most of the world's water would be totally impossible. Okay, but wait, there's more. This same polarity doesn't just make water sticky. It also turns it into one of the most powerful mixers on the entire planet. Its polarity makes it an incredible solvent. So good, in fact, that it's earned the nickname the universal solvent because it can dissolve so many different things. So when water dissolves something, what it's creating is a mixture. And a mixture is really simple. It's just a combination of stuff where all the original ingredients are still in there. They're just all jumbled up together. 
And mixtures come in two main flavors. You've got homogeneous mixtures where everything is so evenly mixed you can't even see the separate parts. Think about stirring a drink mix into water. And then you have heterogeneous ones where you can clearly see the different bits and pieces, like trying to mix sand and water. Now, the most common type of homogeneous mixture is what we call a solution. And it's got two parts, the solvent, which is the thing doing the dissolving, and the solute, which is the thing that gets dissolved. So in salt water, it's super simple. Water is the solvent and the salt is the solute. But there are other types too. A suspension is when the particles are big and heavy enough that, you know, they eventually settle to the bottom. But a colloid is a special case where tiny little particles stay suspended and don't settle out. Things like milk or even blood are actually colloids. But water's most vital role, I mean, the thing that makes it absolutely essential for life, might be its role as the stage for the chemistry of life itself. It's the entire basis for acids and bases, a delicate balance that every single living thing depends on for survival. So the definitions are pretty straightforward, and it all comes back to water. When you dissolve something in water, if it releases hydrogen ions, these H plus particles, it's an acid. If it releases hydroxide ions, the OH minus particles, it's a base. It's that simple. And we measure all this using the pH scale. It runs from 0 to 14. Anything below 7 is acidic, we're talking lemon juice or stomach acid. Anything above 7 is basic or alkaline, like baking soda or soap. The lower the number, the more acidic. The higher, the more basic. And what's sitting right there, dead in the center? A perfect 7.0. That's pure water. It is the ultimate neutral, the perfect balance point for all of chemistry. Now, this is so critical because our cells, your cells right now, have to maintain an incredibly stable pH to function. And they pull this off using buffers. These are amazing mixtures that can soak up extra acids or bases to stop wild swings in pH. This constant, stable, internal state is called homeostasis, and it's literally what keeps us alive. So from its weird bent shape and its polarity to its role as the ultimate biological balancer, our very existence depends on these delicate, incredible properties of water. It really makes you wonder, what happens when we throw that perfect balance out of whack?